Speaking of WhatsApp, big announcement from WhatsApp just broke this morning. They are switching on encryption for everything. Messaging, audio, video, phone calls, end-to-end -end encryption. And it's going to be good encryption because it's being implemented by uh, a hacker whose name is not only memorable but well-known to people who listen to Securely Na Security Now, Moxie Marlin Spike. Uh, he, they have added end-to-end -end encryption on WhatsApp now to every form of communication on their so great service. Uh, and I can only imagine how law enforcement is going to react uh, to this. Remember, they're already being, uh, is it sued by uh, the Department of Justice over uh, uh, messages that uh, they, they say, we can't tell you what's in the message. We have no way to access it. Um. So this is uh, really. And again, I think this, this was a PR mistake by the FBI by turning this the switch on. They, I think, they definitely accelerated all these companies looking at trying to build basically things that are already going to be out there that are not. You know, you can't go back. I mean, I think that it has created an arms race that they didn't need to create. Um, that maybe would have we would have gotten to anyway. But I think that they definitely accelerated the whole process by uh, pushing something that they ended up dropping in the end. It already had encryption. It was uh, since 2013. In fact, that's a. I guess there, it is a, It's not an active uh, lawsuit, but uh, the government uh, has asked for a wiretap. They uh, they're considering a court case after a wiretap order ran into WhatsApp's end-to-end -end encryption, according to the New York Times. Um, the the <laughs> Joseph DeMarco is a federal former federal prosecutor said the government doesn't want to stop encryption, but the question is, what do you do when a company creates an encryption system that makes it impossible for court-authorized search warrants to be executed? What is the reasonable level of assistance you should ask for from that company? And uh, you know, here you, this is a Facebook-owned company, so they have plenty yep. of resources to defend themselves. They are a United States company, widely used, though, in fact, more widely used outside the U.S. than inside the U.S., that's um, interesting because what do they do when other countries ask for that? I mean, was it WhatsApp that had to turn off service because of a legal dispute in, in one country? Yeah, and but Brazil, started, briefly, yeah. Brazil said, if you don't hand this over, we're going to shut you down. <clears throat> what they didn't take into consideration is that 93% of all yeah. Brazilians use WhatsApp. SMS messaging uh, prohibitively expensive in that country. So after 24 hours, the, the government backed down yeah. and said, ah, sorry, never mind. And, of course, Telegram, one of the other competitors to WhatsApp, had a boon of over a million signups in that 24 hours in Brazil. Uh, Moxie, Moxie does open whisper systems, um, and I think it's off-the-record OTR uh, encryption that they implement, which is very strong. Uh, well, Steve will talk about this, no doubt, next show. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but bringing in Moxie Marlin Spike uh, reassures everybody in the crypto community that unlike uh, Telegram, which rolls its own encryption... This will be real, true, strong encryption that the government, not only the government can get into, but it presumably it will be implemented mm -hmm. properly so that WhatsApp can't get into it. And that's going to be the key. Now what will have to happen if this if this goes forward is the go this will be the showdown where the government has to say, we demand, and we, we don't, I don't hold, I think they would do it. We demand of WhatsApp as a U.S. company to provide us with the back door. And that will be an interesting case. And you're right. I think maybe a misstep on the Department of Justice's part because of the high profile of the Apple case. The, I, think I think it almost forced everyone to, to go down that path. Like, you know, you had to now be, you know, if you're going to do it, you, the, the key is, is you want to, it's kind of like uh, uh, when you have records, the key is to, you can't destroy them after the government asks for them. You know, you can only destroy them yeah. legally before <laughs> the government asks for them. So, so a lot of these companies, before the government starts to legislate uh, rules of, of encryption, I think a lot of these uh, companies are trying to get things into place, you know, and, and make it more and more difficult to, uh, to manage that process. Uh, you know, 1 billion people use WhatsApp. Yep. This is the case. This we is try in one. Brazil, Leo, and we have put it back because <laughs> if we choke to him and you, everybody use it. Now, we We're should right point back. out that Rene is an expert in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I have been yelled at by a lot of really famous Brazilian people. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he has respect for uh, the Brazilians. Muito bom, muito cansado. Uh, and I, I, I really, I'm, I'm actually thrilled, and I will now start using WhatsApp, right? 
um, because this is exactly how it should be. There have been other, of course, many others, including Open Signals, uh, 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 Whispers on Open Signal, uh, before this. But WhatsApp is everybody. You got to use a messaging system that everybody uses. It does no good to use Threema, a secure messaging system, if no one else is using it. And the more, the better, because if it's one company, you can right. bring all the resources of the government against it. But if everybody is everybody. doing this, it's much harder to, you know, people will just move around between services. Yeah, Google, you want to stand with Apple? Yeah. Uh, Facebook, you want to stand with Apple? This is how you do it. Just encrypt. Yeah. Well, I think that's what that's the direction they're going. It's a it's strong public key, public key crypto. Uh, actually, the founders Acton and Coom uh, of uh, WhatsApp have deep roots in the security uh, and, and crypto community as it is, and bringing in Marxy Marlin Spike just makes it even uh, even more credible. And we have so much. I mean, right now it's messaging, but everything is going to be tied to these services. They're so popular as payments. Some of them, especially in the Far East, uh, they're they're used as gaming platforms. They're used as commercial platforms. Yeah. They they are the platform on top of the smartphone, and it's having those be vulnerable. It's just not acceptable to anybody. It'll it'll limit the growth of them. Yeah. Well, uh, as uh, Wired points out, <laughs> WhatsApp is probably the largest, if not one of the largest, if not the largest communications network in the world. Yep. So this is a big one. This is bigger than AT&T say they're doing it. This is bigger yes. than, this is big. One billion active users. WhatsApp just put out their white paper on the security, Leo. I stuck it in the, ah, in the show notes. Let me take a look at it. Uh, I presume it's OT. Look, you know what? It's <laughs> Kuman Acton and, Mar and Marlon Spike. <laughs> yes, smart people. <laughs> that's all you need. Uh, that, <laughs> I, I'm satisfied. I mean, with the real question, of course, and I'm sure Steve will go over this uh, himself, is... Not that it is, it's, it's strong encryption, we know that, but but are the keys totally yours? Are the keys stored in any way uh, at WhatsApp? And it doesn't look like they are. Yeah, it's super detailed. It's really nice. So, man. Transport, security, everything. And it, yeah, and, and it's uh, on all messaging? Yeah, they're using uh, OTR, it looks like. Yeah. It, it's on all messaging. Well, that's great. Oh, man. Wow. That is a shot across the bow. More like this, please. Yeah, yeah. Every it, that's you. You na you nail it. If everybody did this, then what are you going to do? It's yeah. like done. <laughs> well, the problem is, is then it becomes a, a conversation about competitiveness of U.S. companies because if you have international companies and U.S. companies right. and everyone adding it all, it becomes this this Pandora's box that's very hard to put all back together in a for from an encryption perspective. Yeah. Um. You know, Steve was going to do a, a crypto solution. Steve Gibson, the host of our security now. And he saw that this was a couple of years ago. He saw this coming. He decided, I'm not going to make it because I don't want to be like lava bit. Yeah. And, and and have to go out of business because I refuse to help the government. And that's what lava bit did. Pulling like Reddit and pulling your canary out of your. Oh, your there's canary. another one, right? Yeah. Last week, uh, Reddit had a what they call a. Um, Ask me anything. <laughs> no, they had a, a canary. What do they call oh, them? Sorry. A, 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 a NSL canary. Yeah. So uh, other companies, Apple does. It. Is, is yeah. Apple's canary still there? I don't think so. Ooh. I have to double check, but I think they lost yeah. it. Apple did ago. it. So yeah. the idea is uh, you can't, you're not allowed when you get a national security letter, in most cases, to say you got a national security letter. These are the letters that are issued by the, the secret FISA court saying uh, hand over the goods on user X. Uh, and, uh, oh, and by the way, you may not tell user X or anybody else that we just asked you for this uh, under penalty of going to jail for the rest of your life. So you can't do this reactively. You can only do it proactively. So what they, what Reddit did and what Apple did is they put in their transparency reports, to date, we have not received an NSL request from a, any federal agency. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. But it disappeared from Reddit's transparency report last week, which means they did. Yeah. And I don't, Apple did this first that I was aware of. Yeah, I think they lost theirs a couple of years ago. Yeah. I have to double check. Yeah. And, the, and the cool thing is that, of course, uh, Reddit can't talk about anything like that themselves. So a couple of people did an AMA. Oh, really? <laughs> about, about, about the, about this what thing. What that but means. Not, not someone inside, uh, inside Reddit, but two uh, intellectual, <laughs> intellectual property safety and security experts basically said here's everything that we can t that that can be told about uh, their their uh, interaction with this so it's oof. there's it's it's there's it's it's going to blow up to a point where this really has to be an open discussion and it's going to end with uh, deciding is this going to be a principle or is this just going to be something we're going to deal with um 
meaning that do, it, do users have the ability to encrypt things and have a secret that the government cannot get at, or is that not something that people have the right to have? Uh, and either way, you're going to have to accept some bad stuff that goes with whatever way you're, the issue went for you. Yeah. Apple lost theirs in September 2014. Oh, it was that long ago. It was yeah. a while ago. <sighs> Well, I, I really think there's going to be a lot more, uh, a, a lot less secrecy behind NSLs from now on. It really, the 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 number of national security letters that have been issued over the past uh, since 2006, numbers in the high thousands, I think something like 12,000, 13,000. It's not something that is a very special. We must go to the special oak paneled room in our robes and make this plea to someone. <laughs> it's like no, it's a real bureau. It's turning to a real bureau bureaucratical uh, procedural thing where if you want it, you get it. Uh, they basically, basically. It might have been hard to get initially, but now the process is so well trodden that if you you know how to get the NSL, if you actually definitely want to get it, uh, and so uh, it's once people realize exactly how much power a national security letter has and how little oversight there is uh, and how little visibility there is, I really think that's one of these tipping points that's gonna be part of that long. It's it's, a, it's almost like we're gonna have like a Vatican II sort of council. Uh, of discussion of uh, because there are two different forces that are very very important that seem to have absolutely completely uh, uh, incompatible goals with each other uh, and it's just going to have to be a long conversation that uh, maybe even amends the constitution to really define this in such a way that it informs every law that comes after it and and I think that one of the one of the real challenges here is also that uh, I, I think that to do this, you have to do it internationally. They're going to have to get all the countries to have some kind of charter that says that they're not going to do this. And it's going to be so hard to corral that in. We're talking five to eight years. And at the same time, you're going to have software companies and hardware companies trying to do everything they can to get to a point where they've sold 200 million phones <laughs> by then or 300 million phones that are already so far down the path that it would be very difficult to, you, know, you can't roll them back. I think that's the, that the key is trying to get it under the bridge before you can do anything about it. A lot of quantum computing research being done right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really, that's what's well, going to have to happen, right? They're yeah, just going to have to well, get faster it. computers. And they're working I'll, on I'll, ways of protecting against quantum breaking, too. So <laughs> cat and mouse I've, continues. I've, I've been hearing a lot of people talking about how the next the next step for encryption or for, or for data security is going to be stuff like artificial intelligence, where you can actually go, you can actually go ahead and say that we, uh, we, the makers of the security product, literally do not know how this product works because we're using, this, we're using machine intelligence to create it. Uh, this is the same way that the uh, at Google, the developers of uh, the Go app that made headlines a few weeks ago by being a f the first really competitive and successful Go app, the developers will tell you, we do not know what this app strategy is. We did not come up with it because this app is creating its own playing strategy what's, what, whatsoever. Uh, it's amazing that a lot of this, the, the roadmap for these products is going to be, it's going to be more and more important that we, the makers of this product, do not even have the ability to access this data. Otherwise, we are, uh, it's, it's not just a principle thing. It's we do not want to spend 40% of our, uh, of our of our of our time every single week dealing with and uh, and, and uh, re responding to the demands of law enforcement. The only way to prevent that is to say, we literally do not know how to get at this data. Incidentally, that appears to be what WhatsApp has uh, done. I've been reading through the uh, white paper, and they're doing something that Threema does as well, which is a QR code that allows you to in-person verify. So the next time you guys are out, out here, we should exchange QR codes. And here's what they say. WhatsApp users additionally have the option to verify the keys of other users with whom they, they are communicating. So they're able to confirm that an unauthorized third party, including WhatsApp, has not initiated a man-in-the-middle attack. This can be done by scanning a QR code or by comparing a 60-digit number. This is a way to uh, fully verify that you and only you and your uh, correspondee have the keys. And that eliminates WhatsApp's ability to do anything, which is what they want. 